So once again, thank you for joining us once here. Uh... <laughs>my job i've got such a great gig here hi i'm josh the rv nerd this is a freedom spirit it's a uh, rear bath super slide couples camper um it should fit within the realm of a lot of half ton towability obviously you know you always want to check your safety specs your your payload your, your tow rating individually and if you need help doing that you call our team our outfitters are always happy to check on that for you and we will make sure we put your safety before the sale so what we're looking at here is an asdell lightweight product uh it's a cousin to a freedom express but it is not a clone to a freedom express spirit and freedom express are very similar they come from the same family but they're not identical twins like i said they're cousins you'll see a lot of similarities though like we are uh carpetless and ventless flooring and we are a carpetless super slide which is uh I, something i think a lot of people are really really going to like um the taller ceiling uh the, the 80 inch uh true queen bed is in here so that you know if you wanted to swap the mattress out because uh let's be real with one another Factories rarely put the world's best bedding in these things, am I right? I often call it the blue backbreaker wafer of death. And there's a reason for it. If you sleep on it, you're going to wish you were dead. It's a medieval torture device. <laughs> uh, we've got a 100-watt uh, uh, roof battery like, bat solar tending package on here. Also, it has one of those really fun, really cool, like Legends of Zelda hidden pantry situations that... I always like the bed lifts up. There's crazy cool storage under there. A uh, big rectangular shower, you know, not a small little radius shower. There's a couple little things here and there where I'm like, eh, but overall, I like what they did here. It does have a lack of door side windows. It's just kind of unavoidable with the floor plan like this. But if you don't care about that, like if you like to keep the shades down, you're going to like what you see here. Leave me comments as we go. Let me know what you think and make sure you like our video and hit that subscribe button to catch us the next time around. For now, let's get going. This one's fun, guys. You know, it occurs to me, if you've ever seen an Apex 265, this is just that on steroids. It's like if the Apex 265 graduated high school, then went to college and got a doctorate. <laughs> now, this thing had an absolutely enormous feeling in it, and it actually took me a minute to put my finger on it. I said, okay, well, we have a lighter color palette. We have good lighting. Um, you saw how the slide is carpetless and the slide floor matches the main floor. That requires a little bit better grade of linoleum to accomplish. It is my personal preference. I like anything that is carpetless, but uh, this is my preferred way of accomplishing that. It's the uh, nerd preferred, if you will. But there was something else going on. I said, okay, well, this is a cousin to a Freedom Express. I did some measuring. I said, yep, it's got the same six foot nine ceiling. But then I looked and I said, oh, Oh, it's got a big vaulted ceiling. But then I, I was like, okay, cool. Can I stand in, a, in the shower? And the short answer is, yeah, no problem whatsoever. But I noticed I wasn't experiencing a vaulted ceiling in here. And I'm like, what's going on? But I didn't have to go far to get my answer. Because as I walked out of the bathroom, I went, aha. The ceiling's weirdly, interestingly, only vaulted in the living room. You see that... that curved piece of trim right here when you get into the bedroom when you get into the bathroom it reverts to a six foot nine linear interior ceiling now it's all vaulted and bowed on the outside so you have water runoff you have structural stability and all that they just open the living room up which makes the most sense since this is where you're spending the majority of your time it actually reminds me if you remember back when saber first debuted Saber had a couple travel trailers that certain rooms were bubbled and vaulted and other ones weren't. They did it where it mattered most. Just kind of interesting. So that little mystery solved, I started digging further. Um, the, uh, the windows here are maximized to give it a nice big feel as well. All the windows open for airflow, including the slide side breeze windows. I did leave that one shade partially down so you could see, you know, all of the window treatments. It seems like everyone has a little bit different opinion on this. Uh, I, I don't mind the boxy valences and lambrequins because when you pull the shade down, you don't get any light bleeding through the side. It really blocks off, especially nice if you're taking a little midday snooze in uh, the old theater seat over here. Um, uh, I, I do kind of like the blackout roller shades that are not present in this RV, um, but at least they did use a, a very thick, heavy black fabric on that pleated shade to help keep the sun out of there. So, I mean, you know, six to one, half a dozen to another. Um, the colors are very neutral, but they're on the lighter side. It does feel open and airy in here. Um, and the uh, the dinette over here. 
it is a U dinette. I don't know that I, it's necessarily, I haven't measured it. I don't think it's a true U dinette, as I like to call it. Um, it's not quite as wide as some of them. Um, and you can kind of tell that because it has a little bit smaller dining table. So this is probably a three-person dinette. And I say this all the time. It's my personal preference. It's not a bias against uh, spirit or anything here. I would take those posts out. And I would put a set of free-floating folding legs on that. If you can just, like, Google those, you could call one of our parts, our outfitters, and we could get you some of those. Maybe 40 bucks or something like that. You can have yourself a free-floating table that you could pull in front of the sofa if you wanted to. You know, whatever works for you. I do like that big paddle switch in the slide side over there for the lights uh, overhead. It's just something nice and big and easy to hit. My only thought is I'm a klutzy, clumsy idiot, and I'd probably, like, I'd bump it constantly, you know? <laughs> Um, these are using Furion air conditioners, by the way. Um, so Furion's kind of cool in that they don't use a big and a little air. They just only make a bigger, more powerful air. Um, it's a 14,500 BTU. Allegedly, it has some kind of bigger equivalence. I don't know how that's calculated. I'm not, I'm not going to start getting into that. Um, when, when something starts feeling a, a little bit more like a story than, uh, you know, a, a specific thing I can calculate and measure and compare against other guys. I try not to get in that. I try to, let's stick to the facts. Now, I've seen a lot of different builders make, this layout is so common. Like, um, Grand Design Imagine really kind of cracked the code with this one. And then since then, like, everyone's come out with their spin out, which is cool. I like all the variances. A lot of brands will put, like, a big walk-in pantry or something over here. But you notice on this one, we don't have all that. We'll get to that in just a second. First, let's start cracking stuff open. Because this one has more storage than meets the eye, but it seems appropriate to begin with what does meet the eye. Now, as long as I'm staring at the entertainment center, if I park myself here at the theater seat, this is kind of your point of view, you know? Um, it's not a full viewing window in the entry door, but it is a frosty glass window, so you're maintaining privacy and still getting some light, which is nice. Now, really important. Like, you see the storage down here. That's cool. But do you see the gap below that where the cabinet doesn't come or the wall, as it were, doesn't come all the way down to the floor? That, to me, is very important because that means this big, giant, full wall, like Legend of Zelda secret storage walk-in pantry, closet tainment center, a plaza tainment center, folks. That's what we have here. It means that it's not going to scratch up and dig up the floor. It floats above the floor. It's not going to scuff your flooring. That is a problem some other builders of these big secret walk-in pantries have had. Now, it has two latch methods. First of all, it has a, uh, a, a magnet right here. Um, by the way, that is a, uh, an awesome little hide-and-go seat uh, spot. And then um, up top, there is a, uh, a little just kind of clip latch for traveling. And somebody bang something up here and gouged our woodwork. We are going to have to get that fixed and replaced for you, folks. No big deal, but uh, unfortunately, that, that happened. Um, the taller ceiling means a little bit taller cabinet space here, which is kind of nice. It's all pocket-screwed cabinetry. And I like the little um, uh, sink cover slot that they have right here. It just gives you a handy place to get those out of the way. I have still yet to see any manufacturer give us side splashes beside the stove, and I'm going to continue crying about it till it finally happens. Admittedly, the counter space and the prep space in this one is pretty limited. This RV has great storage. It has great living space, an awesome bedroom, awesome bathroom. Kitchen prep facilities are limited, but remember this has an outside camp kitchen. So you kind of have an inside, outside one-two punch that you could lean on. You don't have to do all your work out here. You can do some of the work outside. Little, uh, you know, bench and storage doors. But down below, you see this one has the handy little hidden, uh, you know, pooch buffet thing. The little dog dishes, cat dishes, whatever. If you're a dog camper or a cat camper, leave a little dog or cat emoji in the comments and then tell me what kind of dog you got. I always, I don't know, for some reason, I just, it always interests me. Um, probably no surprise to you. I'm just weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan this. I couldn't have planned this. The universe just handed me an ace in the hole. I just get done talking about pets, right? I find this in the camper. Love is a four-legged word. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward, uh, big sliding privacy door into the bedroom. 
Um, but did you notice how we had that folding counter extension right there? I love that they included that to give us that, you know, because it is limited on prep space. So that to me is very needed, very appreciated in this floor plan. Also, interesting. Oh, I know why that is there. It's, it, there's a toe kick right here. That toe kick is there for the same reason that countertop extension folds because it they need space when the slide closes. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Digital thermostat uh, on the way through. 60 by 80, true queen bed. So, you know, you're not dealing with the short queen. Um, both sides of the bed, by the way, have their own household and USB outlets, but it's what's under the bed that's really awesome on this one. Because this is where Coachman's whole vaulted queen bed storage system actually uh, originated right here. Um, and, you know, a couple of the different Coachman brands have come up with their own spin on it. Whatever the case may be, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It does bump into the pass-through cavity a little bit, so keep that in mind. Um, the left and the right side of this are not symmetrical, by the way. So over here, we have these, like, storage pockets, basically, and the top ones have netting so stuff doesn't go falling all over the place. Um, and notice how there's, like, that little lip on these things that's because when you lift the bed the top of this is actually a drawer now if you wanted to it's built so that uh like you could sit on that pad and you could have a little like laundry place to uh you know to to fold some things up and speaking of that over here on the other side it comes with its own laundry basket uh four dresser drawers on here my only gripe with this is that you have to lift the bed to get to them but uh, i don't know it's also not hard to lift the bed with the double strut system that we have going on um, another alternative use that you could uh, use for this is how that could basically be a perfect little pet palace. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Dogs, you know, their, their history, their instinct, their DNA, they love their own little cave spot. So when a dog's hanging back and you're out and about, I guarantee you, uh, well, obviously a small dog, big dog may not fit in there. Although a big dog, if you lift the bed up, you could maybe put a pad down here or something like that. Uh, but... Um, if your dog's like my dog, we get him the dog bed, and then he occupies 67% of my king bed at home. How? He's 14 pounds. Any, anyone else? Just me? Now, I, I want to bring full clarity to something I said earlier. I said you could sit on this, you could do laundry stuff. This seat right here, this position is bulked up to be able to hold a chubby adult-sized guy like me. The rest of this is basically just a panel divider. It's not made to hold a big person like me. But it doesn't need to be. Most, most of the time, like, what are you gonna, you're gonna fold up some, some shirts, some beach towels or whatever. That's the kind of stuff you're probably going to pack under here, I'm guessing. I don't know, how would you load it up? You tell me. This is the spot where if you did wanna sit down, uh, you wanna be able to grab that laundry basket, put stuff away, this one right here. I just. I'd, I'm sitting here thinking, oh God, I said people could sit on this and what's going to happen is someone's going to sit over there, bust it, yell at me, and it would kind of be my fault. I just I hope you appreciate the extra clarity we try to bring to things. I don't want you to break your camper. I want you to keep it at your campsite and have a good time. And you know, maybe it sounds small or silly or something like that, but you know, when 12 different builders at least make this exact same way, I bet, I bet it's more than 12. I bet it's closer to 20. When there's, say, you know, more than 10 versions of a floor plan like this, it is those little variances, those little, I don't want to say gimmicks, but gimmicks, you know? Let's let's just call a spade a spade. It's the toys that separate them, like the pantry, like that cool underbed storage, the carpetless, ventless, slide carpetless combo over here. Oh, crap! I forgot to talk about this. What we're looking at right here, by the way, is a gas electric two-way fridge that looks to be about an eight cubic foot. Um, you could throw a 12 volt in one of these, um, it, you know, regionally different parts of the country, dealers, uh, tend to build things for their local customers and, uh, customers out here tend to boondock and dry camp more than say in the Midwest or like in Florida where there's a lot of park campers per capita by comparison. And I see how the TV can swing out. One of the other, uh, kind of cool things, uh, that, uh, they included in here is that handy little wireless charge pad. Um, I love those things. Like that's oh, apparently I've got a Pokemon Go egg hatching. Uh, yes, I am a uh, I, I, I'm a trainer. I want to catch them all. <laughs> it's a Pikachu. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, what other cool thing here? Uh, Freedom Express, their cousin, does this too. With their taller sidewall, they also go with a taller slide out, which opens things up. Uh, I think very nicely. Um, sometimes I wonder if people walking by have any idea if they're on candid camera. <laughs> Now, over here, we're looking at a theater seat. I have no doubt. Um, anytime you see a theater seat, 
mm, not anytime, almost anytime you see a theater seat, you can swap that out for a hide -a bed So there's usually different seating swaptions, as I like to call them in here. Just like the bedroom, you got that big sliding pocket privacy door uh, back here. Um, also right by the door is just our physical switch panel. Um, a lot of campers do have Bluetooth digital things. I don't really see a lot of that on these uh, spirits. It's just, eh, it's just you walk in, you push the buttons, you know? It's just simple, it's easy, it's right there. The bathroom in this is solid. Um, where I like windows like this in a bathroom, even though I would probably personally never have that shade open. I would probably always have that thing closed. And you saw the same thing in the kitchen, by the way. Coachman's like one of the last of the, uh, the manufacturers who still includes a, uh, a little anchor point for the string on that draw shade right there. Just little things like that to me kind of make sense. Now, you might ask, why didn't they use a, uh, a pleated cloth blind or shade in here like they did in the rest of the RV? And my answer to that, I think, is humidity. There's more you know water used in the bathroom, and I don't think they wanted it to get kind of stuffy and musty. Now over here, you notice there's no, like, why aren't there cabinets or storage under this? That is the outside kitchen outdoors, so keep that in mind. And this is a small thing, and again, I'm just being picky. This RV is nice. Like, the, the pedestal table in the dinette and a plastic sink in the bathroom. Those were the only two things that I looked at and went, hmm, really? I, I would have done that um, maybe a little bit differently. And just to kind of show you how nice and deep that is, I like that lower pocket there uh, as well. Now, again, like I said, you saw me on video earlier, but I don't want to, I'm going to keep doing my normal thing. Uh, tall ceiling, tall dude, I fit, and it's a 30, I think, by 36 rectangular shower. I like to the, uh, the sliding uh, glass door, just make sure you flip that latch in transit. And very, very fluffy, friendly, and this bathroom is also easily accessible when the slide is closed. Case in point, if we close the slide and start in the bathroom, you could very easily navigate your way through here. The only thing you're not going to be able to get to in this one is the bedroom. Um, unfortunately, we do totally lose that in transit. So if you do need to make an overnight sleep stop, you will definitely need to find a place to park where you can get that slide open. I don't love that, uh, but not every RV can necessarily accomplish every single goal every single time. Uh, and that's why we take the extra time and effort to close this up. So if you appreciate stuff like that, make sure you hit that little subscribe button. Let's hop outside. So just for those who might not know the difference, there's actually two spirits. I want to make sure I touched on this real quick uh, since they are a little bit newer to our channel. Um, the, uh, there's the Spirit XTR, which was that guy that we saw over there with no nose cap. That's kind of the, uh, the, the just the facts, ma'am, checks the boxes, solid, lightweight, smaller series, you know. Then there's the full Spirit ultralight um uh that's what we're looking at right here this is the uh the the upper member of the family as it were and uh if you see them side by side you see that they're definitely very similar but where you'll find like but you know the better seating the nose cap the the smexier graphics package that's what you're finding uh over here this uh just like apex just like freedom express like any laminated coachman actually even their motorhomes it is an asdell using model so inside the sidewalls below the fiberglass you've got yourself asdell which is a composite it resin material it is a woodless product as compared to um uh you know like luan wall panels and uh the idea behind that is uh less weight less worry less water intrusion also more noise reduction i love the little uh accent light right there that by the way is a switch for the nose cap lights that i forgot to turn on and this right here is the uh, little cordless uh cordless jack drill bit adapter as i like to call it um, what that's going to do for us is if you, you know, don't want to use the manual crank jack, you just hook it up to a drill and let her rip, buddy. Now, uh, up here, this is a cool thing that they do on these, and I've noticed they do this on the XTR Spirits as well. I kind of call it like fish and pole storage, but what else, what else could you or would you put up there? And I just had a, I just, I just pictured in my head, hold on. I, I feel, I feel like somebody is going to say, I'm going to put my sewer hose up there. Please, please don't stuff your sewer hose up in that. That, oh, I know someone's going to, though. You know they will. <laughs>
Now back to the task at hand when I'm not creating my own nightmare fuel. You see the aluminum framework up here. Uh, again, this does have a simple 100 watt uh, roof solar package. It's not the be all end all big solar or anything like that, but it's a solid battery tender. And if you have one with a, a 12 volt fridge on a sunny day, the 100 watt panel should be enough to offset the fridge. Now remember you got lights and fans. I'm not saying that that 100 watt panel is enough to run the RV indefinitely with all your 12 volt stuff. It's an extended camping thing and it's a good when the RV's in storage battery tender thing. Um, this right here, I got a love hate going on with this and I'd like you guys to weigh in on this if you could. Tell me what you think about this little camp kitchenette. So it's cool that we got the little slide out stove top. It's cool that we got dad's medicine cabinet up here. We got room for the bottled water and the hug juice barrels. A little open storage and you see it's, it's right below the sink uh, in the bathroom. That's what we're looking at right here. But if I'm cooking and there's a flame going on, I can't exactly get to the fridge. Now that being said, I don't really necessarily have a better answer for them unless you do something like what Surveyor has done. If you've ever seen Surveyor's little camp kitchens, they have a free floating griddle and um, it, it actually, you know, you store it in the pass-through. So you do lose some pass-through storage, but that little slide out tray down there, it has a second layer that slides sideways. So you can be cooking and still get to the fridge at the same time. So which idea is better to you? All inclusive like this, or having a separate griddle that you then have to store somewhere else, but you can access the fridge and the griddle at the same time. You tell me which one's the best way to go and I'll feed it back to Coachman. Next to that, is fitting enough that we have it next to Dad's medicine cabinet, we got the drunken Uncle Leash latch right there in case Uncle Josh has one too many, which is one more than one. I am an um, <clears throat> ultra light when it comes to spirits. I'm just working with what's in front of me here. Black tank utility flush. Um, these do have a walkable roof, and I do believe that normally these would have a ladder on them. There is unfortunately a shortfall in ladder availability currently that is preventing a lot of builders from including them that normally would. Uh, we have laminated uh, sidewalls, laminated floor, by the way. Uh, the roof is what people would call stick built, uh, but that does mean, you know, it's heavy duty. It can handle snow load. So, you know, if you're like where I'm from, Southern Michigan, out here in Idaho, you get a big dump of snow, the roof is going to be able to handle that uh, extra weight without you necessarily having to get up there, which is, you know, not always awesome, sometimes potentially dangerous. In the pass through, did you see that little blue coily sprayer hose? That uh, could be utilized right over here. And I kind of like how. Uh, like, you know, all of our hookups and stuff are all sort of in one centralized location, which is awful nice. Now, um, the underbelly of these, it is uh, enclosed. It is forced air heated. You may notice the little uh, slide awning pre uh, pre -plep? Yep. pre prep brackets. Nailed it. That we have on the slides right there. All the windows opening for maximum airflow is a nice little feature on this one. Also, one of the other cool things that Spirit does, the module is actually inside in a drawer, but you see this little T-shaped mount. Might be looking at that going, hold on now. <laughs> what is that thing? Well, that is actually a, a mounting point for a digital leveling indicator, which is funny. RVs used to come with little bubble levels on them and stuff all the time, and then they quit. And those are inexpensive. You can get them off the part shop. But it's kind of cool that someone's actually including some of those convenient, like, think about it. Every time you go camping, you're going to want to get it leveled, right? Well, that just makes it easier. The easier something is, the more enjoyable my experience. I'm all about it. I like it. So once again, thank you very much for joining us another time here at Bish's RV. I'm in Twin Falls, Idaho today. It might be in Michigan tomorrow. Might be in Wyoming the next time. Never know where I'm going to pop up. So you can always keep track of me by hitting that subscribe button and catching the next one that comes out. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Let me know what you think about this one. She's fun, right? Bye.